Ha, this is my slide. Um, hi, everyone. I hope you're well after yesterday. Five parties, what was that? Uh, I'm Krzysztof, I'm an evangelist at Epic Games. And basically, like, your guy to talk to if you need anything from us. Uh, mostly, like, you know, uh, I mean, anything, basically. But it can be technical stuff, non-technical stuff. Just feel free to reach out. This is my email address. You can get this later at the, at the end of the presentation as well. Uh, the slides will be available. Okay, so let's get to the talk. Um, I'm gonna be talking about custom tools in general. So let's take a quick look at the custom tools. Uh, why do we want that? Um, so the engine needs to be created in a very generic way so that uh, we, like, you know, you cannot have very specific tools to just solve one problem. We usually try to create tools that solve multiple of those or at least uh, solve very common problems. So for sure there will be a situation where you come across some, some problem to solve that there is no tool for and it's very manual um, process or, or just, you know, it's hardly possible to do with like, you know, human, with human forces and with the time that you have for the project. So um, there is also a lot of stuff about custom tools that we tend to think but it's not true anymore because like, you know, for a long time in Unreal, the, the tools were only created uh, via uh, basically like, men, uh, to, to, sorry, uh, you know, just uh, doing some stuff with, with C++, which not everyone is comfortable with and especially not the people that need the custom tools the most, which is basically artists, designers. Um, and, you know, it used to be that you would have to have a pretty in-depth knowledge about engine inner workings to just uh, be able to create a simple window. And let's be honest, creating a few classes in C++ to just create a simple window with, with one button or just to create a button in Unreal, just creating, you know, a few, a few classes to, to be able to, um, to add this to your window, it's just not a great idea for you know, for solving very small things because you would have to spend a bit of time on just the technical part of it, not on creating what you really want to create. So let's get quickly to, to the point and start talking about uh, what we have now in Unreal Engine 5 that we didn't have in the, in the past. I mean, like, it, it's, been like, it's been rolled out for a while now, uh, but, um, but it, like, you know, with the, with the release, we actually also focused on that a lot, so that so in this case we have we have a lot of new new features available for you, and um, the simplest of them was in the engine for ages already, and you probably are familiar with call in editor functions or events. Uh, you can take a look at uh, this example here. So this is just you know a simple. Yeah, I'm not gonna try to point to this. Um, <laughs> this is just a simple. Um, widget, uh, sorry, a simple blueprint with um, an event that has this call in editor selected, uh, checked basically. And this allows us to create a button that will, app uh, that will uh, be available for you in the details panel and you'll be able to just click this and perform this action in your editor in the design time, not only like, you know, not in the game, but, but you know, in, in just in the design time. So you are able to basically uh, call blueprints during working on, on your level, for example. So let's take a quick look at some of the demo stuff. Um, there are a few things in this, uh, in this, in this demo that, that use this uh, editor, uh, call in editor function, but like one of them is, is just, uh, let me copy this and move this here actually. Hold on. So, I have some randomly, randomly rotated gas canister. I don't know. So let's, um, sorry. Ah, oh, you don't see it, yes. Because I need to, every time, I think I need to close my, that's, that's bad, yeah, okay. So uh, here, if I 
just write snap because this is just the, call, the how I called the tool. Uh, you can see that I have some properties that I can modify just as usually uh, at, like with uh, blueprints or like with objects on, with actors on your scene. Um, and in this case, for example, I can just rotate this arrow here. It's not perfectly visible, but this arrow points somewhere to the floor, right? And if I hit snap, it just goes directly there. Okay, it was not floor, it was a wall. Actually, this is funny, nice little thing because I have an opportunity to just do the uh, DVD kind of logo thing now. Um, and those actors here, if I select them all, for example, they will all be also like taken into account in this operation, each like separately, uh, one by one separately, right? So this, um, this function I'm calling on all of them, but one by one, you know, it's not that it kind of takes into account that I, I have them all selected, it just like, you know, iterates over all of them and, and calls all, all those things. So we probably know how that works, but let's, let's just reset some stuff. I mean, like this is the setup that, that helps me do that. I can now, for example, just distribute them randomly across this uh, sphere. And I can do nice stuff with that because like if I, again, reset, uh, sorry, reset the location and like randomize direction, I can nudge them a little bit and for example, I can have that, sorry. Uh, yeah, just that nice thing generated for me with a few clicks. It's not very useful on its own, but you can just like, you know, if you need something that will give you this kind of result or, very, or, or just anything that, you know, um, will do something for you in the space. Um, it may be really useful if you have a very specific problem to solve. The same goes for this sphere. You can see this sphere. Um, I can just copy this. Oh, sorry. It's Alt and Shift. Um, let's check. Okay, yeah. So I can just copy this. And this sphere actually, like you've probably seen the demo uh, that we presented at the um, launch of Unreal Engine 5. Um, if I type here geometry scripting, geometry. Yep. Uh, so you can see that here I have some options that are like, you know, tagged with category geometry script. I created a tool that allows me to basically, uh, yeah, uh, to basically do some stuff like, for example, change the steps of, of this operation. And in this case, it's not very, it's not very great. So, um, to use, to use in real time uh, in, in game. Actually, those editor script things are not available for you currently uh, during their game runtime. So in this case, you know, like you have that asset on this, that object on the scene, but like, what, what can you do with this? Like, I don't know, only prototype? Yep, although we also have some option that I created as a call-in editor function that if I click, it should be, uh, yeah, it may be a problem here because I use the same name uh, but I can just change the name. So generated box and pick the static mesh. And in this case, uh, now this is just a static mesh actor. And the only thing I have here, it's a static mesh actor being actually, uh, you know, uh, it, we derive from static mesh actor. So this is basically a static mesh actor. And the only thing is that I've added this, uh, you see that, okay. Uh, you said that, that I edit this, um, not, yeah, not this one, uh, the make editable function. And it's just one thing to, to, to notice here. If you use it as a function, there is just a slight difference that you, you're able to now add a category to that because for events, you, would, you wouldn't be able to. Mm, and in this case, I can now have this under the category geometry script, which is super nice. Just, you know, think to, figure, think to, think to remember about if you want to do that. And now I can just make it editable again and change some things. And when I bake it again, you can see that here in the baked meshes, I have those. Uh, and actually, this is this one, just without the material. Um, and it's still like, you know, hollow. We can't see it because there is no light, but let me just, yeah. So it's still hollow. I can still modify the wall thickness and stuff. Okay. Um, let's get back to the to the talk. So this is just just this simple stuff with the geometry scripting. I'm not going to cover that too much, but like this is a very useful stuff if you want to generate those. Um, this is just a, this was just a simple operation creating two meshes and 
like you know subtracting one from the other and then and at the end you can actually use um, blueprint to uh, to bake this to the asset which is awesome in my opinion but now let's talk about something that is a bit more significant and this is editor utility blueprints they were in the past there were like a few of them and you had an option to create like just i don't know the editor utility actor object and maybe the asset uh, actor and action utility i'm going to tell you quickly about those um, but now you have like you know way more options than just them and also way more way, way more options within them so um, First of all, uh, uh, editor utility actor and object are just an actor and object, an, an actor and object that um, the, the main difference is that they allow you to access editor functionalities from like within themselves inside of the blueprints. And um, you can just place, you know, the actor on the scene and just do some stuff or you can just, you know, use the object as one of one part of your system and, and just base things of that. Um, and uh, asset actor, uh, sorry, asset action utility and actor act action utility. Uh, these are things that you, you can, for example, see in the in the corner in the, on the left. Uh, there is a context menu entry under the scripted as scripted asset actions. Um, I have an, an an entry called create uh, material from selected textures. I'm going to show you this still later. Um, and you can create those actions for right clicking assets or right clicking actors. You can filter by class. And you can also uh, decide that, um, like, what happens when you click them, right? Uh, and one of the coolest things I've found when, while creating this talk is the editor utility tool menu entry, which allows you to add buttons to, to the editor or uh, to the editor menus. Like, you can add a button to file menu, for example, or to the toolbar. And I'm going to also, like, just briefly show you how it looks. Um, also, editor utility widget, which is just amazing on its own, and I'm going to have a, a separate section about it. So these are probably not all the functions. I mean, like, don't take a look at the scroll bars because they're like, you know, we're looping here. Uh, I should have probably, <laughs> probably created a, a small pause at the beginning, but it's quite a bit of stuff. With subsystems, it's like, I don't know, maybe 20, but with the editor scripting things, it's like hundreds or like at least, yeah, over a over hundred functions that, that, you're, that you can use that were exposed for you from the editor. Um, you can see here maybe, yeah, you can actually very well see it. Uh, these are some of the most interesting I found, like, except the ones that I'm using here in the stock. And you can, for example, um, you can, for example, see, okay, and some that I, like, just, you know, figure out it would, it would be great to show you because I'm not necessarily talking about them later, but just, you know, take a look at them and figure out how you want to use them. Uh, you, you can have some things like you can create a new blank map, for example, from just, you know, the blueprint, which is, which is awesome. And you can also pick if you want to save the, the existing map. You can use this in combination with the show message dialog, which is here. Actually, I can do that, I guess, right? Yeah. So you can also combine this with the show message dialog, which can just ask the, pers ask the person using your tool if you really want to, I don't know, do that, and if so, do you want to save the map now, right? And then if you have the answer, you can just use this, use this, um, use this note here. Um, you can get levels of your current world or of any world. You can get play in editor worlds, and this is actually quite significant because it means that your tool can not only work on the on the uh, like on the actors, for example, or on the things that are in your editor runtime. You can also just you know hit play in editor and then have a window that will do some things. I don't know, spawn a wave of enemies from just the editor tool, but it can happen in your runtime as well. Um, you can load maps. You can uh, get selection, which is great. So you can get just all the selected actors, and I'm using this quite a lot. Um, you can control the whole uh, version control from here. So you can check out assets. You can create new assets and add them to the repository. Just a lot of things. Oh, and one of my favorite things, the spawn actor from object. I'm not sure if this is also available for, for the gameplay because I've never, I've never used such a thing, but this just allows you to create an actor from an asset, which means that, for example, if you have a static mesh and you would drag it uh, to the scene normally, you now don't have to create an empty actor or like an empty static mesh actor, then add this 
uh, like, you know, get the static mesh component and set the mesh to something specific. You just have this all solved with, with one block when you just pass the static mesh and you have this spawned uh, in the world as a static mesh actor and the sound would just, you know, be a sound actor and, and whatever you pick, if it has a factory that allows us to add this to the scene, and you can define those factories if you want, but this is like beyond this talks, uh, beyond this talk, you can also you can also create your custom assets, you know, and and, and do that. Um, so let's take a look at the editor utility blue, uh, widget, and I'm gonna actually so because most of this stuff is not necessarily a topic for a separate demo. I'm gonna just combine all this about the editor utilities into one. Um, but let's let's take a look at, at what this gives us. And this is also, for me personally, pretty significant. Uh, so you can now create windows, editor windows, just using UMG, which is the, the, our widget, yeah, like just the widget blueprints, you know? And you probably are familiar with, with the tool already, so there is nothing different, uh, except maybe that some things are not, you're not able to use, um, directly in the game uh, from the from the new features but uh, but you just you know create a ui like you would create a ui for your game the only difference is that you now don't have to design the button or make it click you know the best you can because you're just creating a tool for the developer you don't need this to be pretty um, so some of the widgets that come with uh, editor utility blueprint widget blueprints long names um, this is uh, great uh, for, for things that, if you want to, for example, edit some property of an object, you can, for example, create this property view. And this will basically create something that happens, uh, like the same kind of widget that you would create in the, um, that will be created in the details panel, basically. So you can just select that, okay, now I want my uh, user to be able to edit this property of this object via like using this blueprint and you just set this up like this you know you just drag this uh on the on the try drag the property view into the uh designer uh, window and uh, and in this case you can just set object on this property view and 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 just pass the the object that that you want and you actually uh yeah there is a property name also uh, that you that you need to need to give to this, to this function, and this is just your variable name, which shouldn't be too difficult to like figure out those things, you know, and you have that in, in seconds. Um, and one uh, thing that I, that I did there, and you can see that I'm using even pre-construct and construct, this is because if you want to see the result in, uh, during edit, uh, sorry, during designing uh, your widget, you would usually see just uh, the, the, like the property not set or, or something like that uh, message instead of this kind of view. But if you, in, in the design time, if you do the event preconstruct um, call to, to the set object, then you will see that as well during the design time, which is great. Um, but if you want to have that also, um, if, you would, if you wouldn't do the check, the branch here, and you would just call this every time on pre-construct, for whatever reason, I'm not sure if this is intended, but currently, uh, when you change the value of this property, the event pre-construct happens again. So I had this weird thing that something worked for me, even though I didn't implement this, because I had the functionality inside of the event pre-construct to recreate the thing when the variable changed. And, I mean, like, and it happened when the variable changed, so that's why I didn't want that un like, unexpected to me behavior. Uh, and I, I decided to just do it in the design time and then on construct when I'm doing it uh, during runtime. So uh, yeah, the same goes for the details view. Very similar thing. Uh, in, in this case, you just don't have to pass the ref uh, sorry the um, property name, and it gives you the full details view in your window of any object. And you don't have to do that for the object or for the actor that is on the scene you can do that for any object in the memory, right? So I'm using this uh, very very much for the tool that I'm gonna show you later, uh, that I'm actually viewing the full details panel for the, for the objects that allow me to later generate some things. Um, so 
one other great thing about those widgets, both of them actually, uh, they have an option of, of, of uh, assigning an on property changed event. So now you can react to, to changes on the object as you just did, uh, you know, with uh, on prop, how was it? Post edit change prop, with post edit edit change property function in C++, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, this is just like two, two, two things. One slight, tiny little thing that I wanted to show you also. If you didn't know that, you can directly plug those in here, but you can also create an event and then just drag this guy anywhere you want in your blueprint. So this is also pretty useful if you want to just you know, have a bit cleaner stuff, uh, cleaner blueprint, you know. Um, Transactions, which means basically a support for undo, redo. You can do that also in Blueprints. And uh, to do that, you just need to use, uh, to basically create a transaction. So, so you can either use the macro that does it for you, if you, if you actually, in, in your case, it's like, you know, how you want to do that, or you can just do it manually and begin the transaction, then later end or cancel it manually. And in the in the meantime, you in the mean, sorry in the meantime you would have to uh, use one of those like snapshot object or transact object. The difference between them is that snapshot object just uh, so both of them create a copy of an object for the undo buffer. So you have to do that before you do the changes. So you copy this un, uh, this object for the undo buffer, save it in the memory, and then you can do the changes. And you know, and then later, if you want to get back to this, uh, to the state of this object from pre from before your changes, you would just uh, hit Control Z, and then it would go to the to the state from the moment when you called the transact object or snapshot object. And the difference between them is that transact object will also check, uh, sorry, will also mark uh, the uh, object dirty. So it means that it, it like you know the small tiny little star that it's not saved will appear. Um, next to it, when, like depending on if it's an actor or if, if it's an asset, for example, because, you know. And this is an example of how you would do that. Uh, hold on. So uh, here I do the begin transaction. I give it the name. This is not displayed to the user. You can actually see that by this being a string because the user facing things are always text in Unreal. And this is just a name for you to show when you like, you know, when you hit Control Z, it will tell you undo this. Um, and then I loop over all the selected things um, and call the transact object on them before I modify them. And then after all that is done, I hit end transaction, and that's and that's it. Super simple. So let's take a look at the tool in question. Um, so actually, I have that view here. Um, and also the button. I have the button here, so I can hit hit it, and like my tool just. Oh, you need to you need to shout at me when this happens. Uh, is it better now? Perfect. Uh, so I have a button, <laughs> and you can see uh, a tiny little button. It also says what I want it to say. So it says opens the asset distribution tool window, and when I hit it, you can see the asset <laughs> as a distribution tool window and now oh i lost some things okay let let me let me solve that um it's just at a tiny little sphere where where are those yeah and scale it down sorry just a sec it will help us a little oh. yeah good um i'll create two of those Okay, and these are just my markers. I'm gonna use them for the design time. You don't have to use them. You can input that stuff manually, but I'm gonna show you how I use them. Uh, and this tool works on a working set. So uh, this means basically that I can, for example, select the actors and save my selection. This way I can select different things, but you can still see using saved selection and it's like three items in the memory, uh, which gives me some information about what I'm doing uh, with this tool. And uh, you can see that when I hit the live preview here and uh, set um, location while having this selected, so I'm still working on those chairs because I have them select saved, right? But I can click now things and you know just set those the, set this stuff. Yeah, I can, for example, set the the, the radius. You know, you can see that the, the radius is now being uh, selected based on based on my. 
position of this guy. Um, and, uh, and when I hit execute, it will just distribute the, the cherries around those points. So let me just, I don't know, uh, offset an angle a little bit and execute on a copy. Uh, do it again. Oh, this is just arc angle. We don't want that. Uh, execute on copy. And now I can, for example, select all of them. By the way, Shift E is a great tiny little shortcut. Shift E selects all the static mesh actors with using the same static mesh, which is very nice. And also, I'm not sure if you know, but Control E is also awesome because it opens the thing that you have selected in the, in the editor. I didn't know about that before creating the stock. Ridiculous cool stuff, but crazy useful. Uh, so I select all of those, and now I, I hit save selection. And again, I can just you know create more copies because I want actually more now. Yeah, whatever. And and currently, and now I can just okay. Hold on. Select this again. Save selection. Okay. We can execute it again. Now I can, for example, I have some additional options. I can pick uh, that I want to just influence a few of those. So if I select the smaller, sorry, it's not a radius, a smaller radius, I'm going to be only acting on, 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 on a few of those. Uh, so I can have a set of actors that I want to you know, place out on the scene and, 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 just, and just work on them. Uh, but oh, yeah, let it be. Uh, but one of the cool things is like you can now create a, a, a thing that they will all look at themselves. Or if you feel like really gamey, you can, for example, change the radius a little bit, have them face outside, and you have a wedding game ready. You know, uh, so so uh, so so you can do that. But it's not it's not everything. Let let me just put it a little bit up. So it's it's here now, and I created this tool so that I can use the same interface and the same the same stuff for, for example, distributing them on a sphere. Why not? And you know. It's not particularly useful in this scenario, but this is just a demonstration, right? And what is, I think, one of the best things is I can control Z and just, you know, undo all those things with my tool, so, and get back to those. Um, yeah, uh, one, one, other, one other cool thing is, like, for example, if you have the, the sphere, the circle, and now I, I'm gonna hit the execute and just keep, her, keep the rotation, Let, let's make this, Zero now. You know these are just randomly rotated, but I can, for example, make them. Uh, I don't know, face one direction. Then again, keep this, but in this case, I'm going to shuffle them, and you have them randomly. You know, just facing some 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 places. So you can you can do a lot of things. You can just have them placed out on the grid, for example. Um, there is. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, so, so there is a lot of possibilities with this tool that I've created. I'm going to quickly show you how it's done. And uh, this is all, all the stuff that is there. You can see that they, here I have the distribution base class. And you can see that I have a location, set si uh, sorry, location size, max actors to process and orientation rule. And then uh, I have the set location and, and set size as called in editor things. And I'm, I just create the, construct those objects in the runtime uh, based on what I have selected here, the class I have selected here, uh, and, and it just creates uh, those objects somewhere in the memory and then gives me uh, the details view of those in here. And I can directly just, you know, without creating any of those widgets. Uh, I'm going to just show you how the widget looks like. So this is how the widget looks like. Um, I just created those buttons. I could probably just do them the same way as well, but never mind. This is a property view, a single property view, to which I react with, um, with this event uh, that I bind on property changed. And like, you know, this is just a single property so that I don't have to check for, for the property name. And I'm here just, you know, uh, filling this with the uh, values from the previous distribution and creating a new distribution uh, to, to fill this with. Actually, I'm using a cache value, super useful thing uh, for me. This is just a macro that you create, and, and it looks like this. Um, so actually, you'll, you'll get the link to download this plugin uh, later on. So, so if you want to take a closer look at, those, at, those inner working, at the inner working, workings of that, you can, you can just very well use that. It's a little bit messy, this whole debug draw. is not nice. It's not well done. But I don't care, because I don't have. I don't need this to be very 
performant. Why, why would I, you know? Like, I need to use this, and I don't need anyone else to see it if, I don't know, I'm not shipping this with the game, right? Uh, it is, of course, important to take care of those. Like, for example, I'm going to show you later one optimization thing that is good to, good to know. But, but apart from that, it's just this simple. And, and here, you know, I'm just uh, generating the distribution from calculate location from my distribution base. And, and I get that and set an actual location for each selected asset. The same goes uh, for rotation. I calculate the rotation. And actually, this is calculated for me, uh, and I don't have to even overwrite it. So then, uh, my yeah. Uh, in this case, my circle distribution, for example, the all the stuff that is there is just the calculate location function. Actually, nothing in the event graph, and you can see that here I have the arc angle, angle offset, all the all the things that I've been that actually all the things from the base, uh, and just the two par extra parameters I needed for that, and this is. Everything. This is my whole circle distribution thing. You know, the same goes for uh, the sphere. It was a little bit more difficult, but I, you know, I, I, I figured out it. I figured it out on Stack Overflow, of course. Some Python, <laughs> some Python script was there for for that, but I just rewrote it. Um, just wanted quickly to show you just an, an alter, alternative, and. You know, the only parameters I use is the selection and element ID, so I can actually access those actors, uh, and and then the actor that I'm processing right now, if I want, this is my actor that I'm processing. These are all the actors, right? But uh, I don't need that because I just need the length of this array for most of those cases. Although I mean, like I could do that, I could use that. And in the, in this case, I mean, you know, this is just simple maths. It's nothing nothing fancy here, and this distributes things on the sphere. Um, and with the rotation, it's, it's even easier because, you know, you can see that I'm just, you know, based on the rotation, I'm, I'm either finding, look at rotation, and this is just re inverse of this, and that's it. I, and we have them facing inside or outside, you know, when they point towards the center location uh, or outside of it. Um, I think this is, uh, this is all for this tool, uh, but you will have access to all this code, um, and you can, you can take a closer look at at that stuff if you want. Uh, so let's take a quick look at how I did the button that I'm pressing there. And this is just this. Again, uh, you can see that uh, this gives me this um, awesome opportunity of, of you know, uh, on execute, which, which means basically when I hit the button, I'm going to just create uh, the, uh, the, sorry, uh, spawn and register tab, which basically creates the window for me. I don't have to, because you can also, uh, let me quickly show you, because maybe it's quite important. Of course, it's all quite well documented, of course. Uh, so, uh, so you can find a lot of info about it, but uh, when, uh, sorry, uh, when you want to open this, uh, this window, you can right click this blueprint actually and just hit run utility uh, widget. But you can also uh, use the tools menu and editor utility widgets, find it under actor distribution tool. I believe you have to run it at least once from the blueprint first, and then it registers, you know, just to your, to your, uh, to your engine. Um, so, so then you can use just the tool window uh, to, to solve that. And in this case, it's just this simple. And if you create a custom event called run, and uh, in the default editor per project user settings, I and I, you would add the um, like this line, just plus startup objects and pass the um, uh, path to this to this uh, object, you would uh, then be able to just you know call this. It's not very visible, but it's get and add the menu entry object uh, function that, that just like solve this, uh, that ju just adds the button, registers it on the editor startup in this case. And I figured out that you can actually, like you don't have to do that on the editor startup actually, because I thought this was the only way, but uh, to actually do that, you can right click and also run editor utility blueprint. Uh, the important thing about the editor utility blueprints is that you don't create them via the blueprint class and create editor utility 
uh, let, let me create editor utility uh, tool menu entry as I did for this guy. And if I right click it, you can see there is no run utility blueprint. But if I do the same from uh, editor utilities, then if I hit editor utility blueprint and then again, uh, let me uh, select the editor tool menu entry. Uh, when, I, when I create this, now I have the run editor utility blueprint. So it's important to just, if you are creating the editor utility, it's not enough to just select the class properly. You just also have to uh, create it from a uh, proper menu. Uh, good to remember. And in this case, so with the, with the stuff that you, you're going to be able to download, uh, you won't have that uh, happen automatically because I'm only sharing the plugin and the, the, the blueprint is in the plugin and this needs to go to the project. So you just need to just download the slides and figure out what I, what I wrote here. Add this file to your config files and, uh, and add this line there as well. And you're going to have the same result, basically. Uh, Python which is a very, okay, pretty fresh addition. Uh, in Unreal Engine 4, it was already quite useful, but now it is, I think, super useful. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it just works that way that, like, if you expose something to Blueprints, you also expose it to Python. Uh, so you just can use anything with Python. Uh, to find the best reference, I always, um, I always write Unreal Engine Python API and also add 5.0 because then it gives you the, the version of the of the 5.0 API and it's it's like you know way way more fresh. It includes geometry tools and stuff. Um, so so yeah uh, so you can so you can actually um, find all the functions there and it's very useful piece of reference. Um, everything in Python will be under module name Unreal, so you need to do the import Unreal and then Unreal dot something, uh, whatever it is. So for example, there is, uh, here you can see uh, that um, if you want to find your uh, created custom blueprint function, you can just, you know, type Unreal dot your name of function of class dot name of your function in the, and also actually it's important because this is like uh, upper camel case, right? And this is, uh, I'm not sure how you call it, underscore lower case, lower scale with underscores, um, a lower case with underscores, whatever. And then you can pass parameters to that, right? Depending on like, you know, just, just as you would in Python. So, you know, so it takes a little bit to, to get used to. It wasn't very straightforward for me at the, at, at the first day I tried. Uh, but uh, but currently, I mean, this is crazy what you can do actually with that. And a few things that uh, that are useful to, to figure out: uh, you can uh, enable the developer mode in Python settings, which means that uh, if you if you do that, it will generate the Python stub file, uh, which I had no idea what it is before <laughs> creating the stock, and actually figured figured this out like last week that you can generate the whole API of Unreal uh, with, uh, with that. Um, uh, okay, uh, and, uh, and, and when you generate that stuff, you can have this for, uh, used for auto-completion. So if you have, for example, Visual Studio Code, you need to just, you know, uh, add this somehow to, like, you know, to your Python linter, Python interpreter, and just uh, let it know that, okay, this stub file is something that I also want to use for auto-completion, and it will just give you, uh, oh, yeah, I need to also, again, do that. This is really annoying. Um, so if I type Unreal here, uh, it's very not visible, but I'm going to, Probably control plus this. I can Oh yeah, I can do that. Um, Unreal dot, and you can see all the stuff that that is there. Uh, and the Python stub file is is just this huge 13 megabytes text file here with like how many lines? Yeah, 371 lines of 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 Python. So it's not necessarily 100% super fast. Sometimes you need to wait half a second for it to generate. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. What was, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna show you later uh, the last point I have here, but let's quickly take a look at how you would do the same things in Python and in, uh, in, in 
uh, blueprints. So, for example, uh, just you know, opening an asset, uh, you, you can, uh, sorry, loading an asset to memory to use it later for anything, like just modify it, for example. You can just you know, use these nodes in the editor, but also you can change this to be the, uh, this kind of Python script. And, and here you can see that I'm using Unreal Editor Again, Unreal Editor Asset Library, and you just need to figure out w what they are. I usually just type in the reference search, does asset exist, and it shows me where it, where it lies. Uh, the same goes, oh, for set editor property, is actually better to set it that way than skip, like dot the name of property equals something, because this also calls post edit change property, which means that the editor will be properly notified that you changed this property, and it will update everywhere when it needs to. Uh, and you also have an uh, option for blueprints here, so also cool stuff. Uh, if you want to get selection, for example, you can you can get the selection set from editor level subsystem, and this is uh, like very similar how you um, how you get that, but you don't just type editor level subsystem. Some, sometimes you can do that with with subsystems, and they they will be actually called editor level subsystem, but uh, but but some some functions in uh, are, are not directly under the same the same categories because uh, because they were created a bit differently. This is a very quick demo, and uh, the very last one I have just a few more uh, oh, sorry uh, a few more uh, slides to show you. But in this case, for example, let's go to the Megascans asset and uh, whatever here I'm gonna select. Yeah, maybe not this guy. Uh, Let's get a chair, a blue chair, painted, wooden chair, yeah. Okay, so when I select those three assets, based on the names, which are not very visible in here, but there is the underscore D, underscore N, underscore R, when I hit right click uh, and go scripted asset actions and create material from selected textures, it's all done in Python, and it now just creates a material for me, saves it, and compiles it, and I have almost the same, a very similar material that I had, just created this way directly. If you have a workflow that bases on those texture names and you can make sure that the naming conventions are kept, then you can just generate materials that's way, this way. And you can also create a uh, material instance, and in this case, uh, the material instance will be, um, you, can, you can just fill the, the, the parameters of the material instance. Uh, a, Jesus. a very quick uh, demonstration of how the how the code looks like uh, in in Python, and uh, you can you can see that uh, that in here I have just defined some actions and then I'm uh, assigning these actions to the uh, specific values of the of the of the you know of the texture names and you can actually combine them if you have MRN sorry MRS for example you would have all the three channels used from a single texture. So it's also, you also get that, so you can see that, so yeah. A slow scope task uh, is, it's, it's just something that you can do for slow tasks, and so that you notify the user to, that, to show them uh, that things are happening. Uh, you will have uh, the example, I'm not gonna go directly step by step talking about it, but there is an important thing to, to understand that you need to call make dialog or make dialog delayed. The delayed one will work that way that like, you know, if after three seconds that, or like if after one second the task is not done, then it will show the dialog. But if it's done, then it won't because it's not necessary. You can also cancel this. So, um, so you can see here an example of the slow scope task. It's just a useless stuff that where I uh, just simulate something taking long. And also there is an option of nesting those. So if you have a slow scoped task and then underneath you have the other one, you will uh, have the two bars uh, and one will go slower than the other, of course. And there is an example of that right here. I'm counting to, to 35, you know, and, and I can also cancel that and I can also display the dialog. So there was the demo, whatever. Uh, I can also display the dialog and I'm doing that with this function here. Uh, here you have a, a, an example of the other dialog as well. Okay, three uh, extra tips for you. And um, this one is about calling things from the editor, like for calling the Python things from the editor. So you would just basically import your module uh, and call a function on it. But here you can see that I import also import lib and reload that. 
and this means that we can uh, it, this means that we can basically um, make sure that every time we press the button, the script will be reloaded. You don't want that for like you know use for, for using this object, but if you're developing, this is great. Uh, tiny little optimization tip: if you see something, if you process multiple actors and you see something called set selected level actors and an array input rather than set actor selection state, it will be probably much faster to, to use the, the array thing because then it will refresh the editor after you're done with all the assets rather than after each asset. And it was like, this took like five seconds for a few assets and that just took no time for me when I, te when I tested it. So it's quite a significant difference. And there are, there are other things you can do, right? I told you about the geometry script. Uh, you can script the sequencer. For example, why not? I mean, like you can literally script the whole sequence if you want. Uh, you can script version control stuff, uh, create startup objects to just call functions on the editor startup for you, and do like a lot of the asset refactor. Uh, you know, just rename the things from your newly downloaded marketplace asset set, for example. Why not? That's it from me. This is a QR, or then underneath you can have, see the blog Dalton did, did slash talks. Uh, I don't have SSL currently on my website, so you need to put HTTP rather than HTTPS. Uh, but you can also use the QR code, and you will have the DEX and also the plugin that I've been using. Uh, if you want to talk to me about it, or if you have any questions uh, regarding that stuff, feel free to contact me via my email address or just talk to me directly on the conference. I'm happy to talk to you all. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, Krzysiek. Uh, now we have a few more minutes for questions, so if you have one, feel free to stand up and uh, go to the microphone and uh, ask. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, right. It was a very nice presentation. Thanks for giving that. Uh, so I've been using our engine a couple of years ago. It's really nice to see that uh, you've added support for Python. So my question is whether, when, can you compare both approaches using the, uh, just blueprints and Python and what are key differences when you want to use one or the other? If, if I need to do something a bit more complex, I would just do it in Python uh, because it's easier for me to write code, basically. But this is me, I'm a programmer, you know, and I don't necessarily, I mean, it, it, all, it all depends. If I have this setup ready for, for, for Python, then I can very well, you know, just create a Python uh, folder in my content and add a script and then call it uh, easily. And I usually would do that if I'm creating, if I'm really creating the tools. And also, there is some stuff that is not not available for you in Blueprints still, you know, uh, like the sco scope task, uh, for example. So in those cases, I'm gonna definitely uh, go for Python. But there's, I don't know, I, I'm usually combining those to be honest. So I'm creating a window that I will have a button to call my, you know, uh, my Python function. That way I can, for example, uh, just, you know, quickly recompile and test rather than just pasting all this stuff in the console again and again. And I'm just, you know, I'll stop into the editor, hitting the button, testing if it works, and getting back to the Python again. So I'm just combining those, mixing, matching to, to my needs, you know. Thanks. Hi, so uh, I have a question about the properties that you were talking about. Um, do you have access to like U properties as objects in Blueprints or Python? No, uh, you get access to U properties but not as objects. So you cannot set flags on them, for example. You cannot make them transient or you cannot make them, you know, uh, editor, uh, read, sorry, like Blueprint read only or, or stuff like that, you know. Uh, so, but you can. So you don't have control over your properties as you have in C++. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is you can set those directly, even if they are not exposed to blueprints. So you can list them. Pro I'm not sure if you can list them actually, but but uh, but you can for sure like access them via via their name. Uh, you know. Yeah, but uh, so you need a name for it. So can you yeah. loop through them? Like, do you have access to at least the list of the properties? Let me check. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, let, let, let's do it here. 
Um, properties. I, I I don't think you have, but uh, but yeah, uh, you can always expose this if you if you're a programmer if you if you have a programmer who could do that. You can always expose this uh, tiny little function that gives you the list of properties uh, to the editor, you know, uh, blueprint, and uh, and just use this uh, inside of your, you know, yeah. tools. So this is just like you know, the, this is a problem for someone who wants to have the full functionality. But if you want to, uh, you know, just do that, and you really need these very specific things for yourself, yeah. then you can always go and expose it. Oh, yeah. Just the only problem with that is that you need to add. C++ uh, to your project, which mm -hmm. you don't always need to, need, you don't always want to do, right? Yeah, okay. Well, thank you. No worries. Oh. Hello. Hello. Uh, is there any documentation on new editor utility things in UE5? Because I think there's like many things like on property change, but I'm not aware of it. Is there, there is, so yeah, you need to mix and match as well <laughs> again. Uh, so first of all, I would really recommend the Python, uh, Python documentation for that as well, uh, because then uh, I'm not sure if in the blueprints you have to also use the set property this way, uh, but what you can do is uh, like, but, but in Python it's very useful, so they, Put this into documentation that okay, use this instead of, you know, uh, this stuff. So you can you, you can read this stuff actually in the in the Python docs. But then uh, also we have a lot of those documented. But I'm pretty sure there is, like, not all of them are there directly descri described. So you would need to go to the editor scripting uh, category and just go through them. This is my way of doing that, you know, and and the same goes for the subsystems, you know. Okay, but I meant more like uh, like listing. Maybe was the wrong question. They're listing all the new things because I think there are many uh, awesome things, but yeah, they I didn't I get to the I, I, I don't those. think there is. I'm trying to document it right okay. now, you know, like this <laughs> this way. Thanks. So so yeah, so I make sure that 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 you're that you're able to see it. Uh, to be honest, I haven't checked the, the documentation. I'm always just you know you know figuring out things in the editor myself and asking people uh, around. And yeah, only only if I if I really have a problem, then I, then I go and Google. But you need to check this. I'm sorry, <laughs> I never tried. Okay, we we good, I guess. Thank you very much, then, and see you around.